All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at a couple of tools that I'm pretty excited about. I got both of these from lockpicks.com. They're $120 each, and these are the brand new, at least from their uh, pin tumbler pick series, the brand new uh, leashy picks. These are for the best, or actually the BE2 keyway for small format interchangeable cord. A lot of different manufacturers, but the first one to come out, it was the best. This one is for the six pin lock and its bigger brother is for the seven pin lock. Now these are a little different than the previous pin tumblers. Yeah, you can pick a lock, but these do so much more. These will help us find the different shear lines on multi shear line locks. They'll help us find the control shear line. They'll help us find the operating shear line. And if there are any master wafer shear lines, it'll find those as well because it allows us to map the locks. Now, a lot of eyes out there just glazed over because you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. So let me show you. This is a small format interchangeable core lock. And the operating shear line is operated obviously with the operating key. When you turn the operating key, we turn that one roughly, I don't know, that's not quite 90 degrees, but you notice the lock popped open. Now, if we pull on that key, nothing happens. The core is secured in place. So if you pick it to the operating shear line, it really doesn't help you a lot in terms of replacing that core. So let's lock them back up and take a look at the other shear line. For that, you will need another key. And this one is usually marked with the word control or with C to annotate control. Again, we slide him in there. It's different bidding. Now when we slide him in, we turn him. He only turns like 10 degrees. And you notice the lock did not come open. But if you pull gently on him, the core slides right out of there and the actuator falls right out. Very cool. Now, how does it work and what are these shear lines all about? Well, let's turn it around and look at the back. I think that's probably about the best place to see it. I've got the operating key in there or the uh, control key in there. Let's look at the control shear line. You notice when I turn the key, that little lug pops out of the side of the lock and it, it, it kind of makes it not so aerodynamic anymore. So if the lug is out, that holds the lock inside of the lock. It doesn't matter if it's a padlock. It doesn't matter if it is a mortise cylinder or a key, uh, a, a knob. Machined on the inside of it is a little ledge that the lug gets behind and prevents the lock from being extracted. So very cool. Okay, the control shear line. Well, let's pop this guy out and put that operating key back and see what the difference is. All right, now when I turn the key, you notice he's locked, he's secured inside of the cylinder. Now when I turn it, the lug stays in place, but the center core turns. And that shear line would be right here, the operating shear line and the control shear line. These are two distinctly different shear lines. Now, it's true, they may share a couple of common pins, but in many times, all of the pins are different. So let's look at the keys uh, on this lock and figure out what's going on. I'm going to lay them side by side, and the control is the one that is in the front. I'm going to try to line these guys up so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to rotate it so it reflects. You'll notice, now for some reason, best starts pin one right here. So pin one, we have a difference in cut. Pin two, we have a difference in cut. Pin three is the same. Pin four is the same. Pin five is different. Pin six is the same. And pin seven is way different. So we have four common pins, four common shear lines between these two keys, but we've got three different ones. Now they are distinct. So if I mix and match, in other words, I pick some of the cuts from this key and some of the cuts from this key, the lock will neither open nor will the control shear work. Well, that's the beauty of these because these new tools allow us to map all of the shear lines. Now, there may be more than two shear lines. If there are master wafers in there, there could be many more than just two. This tool will help us uh, decode the internals of the lock, find all the shear lines, and we can build a map. And from that map, we can pretty quickly figure out which is the control shear line and get that core out of there. So let me put this in a vise and I will show you how to do it. All right, before I mount this up in the vise, I want to show you a couple things while the focus is working. I bought a bunch of these best locks off of eBay. I bought a whole box of them, about $10 each. And that's because I did not get any keys with them. So they're little more than lumps of metal when you don't have keys. I bought, in anticipation, I bought a new, so I rebuilt seven pin core. 
So if I can get that out of there, I can replace it with a, a new core, and I have all the keys for this guy, control and operating. So he'll become quite, quite valuable if I can replace the core. And the way we're going to do that, I'm going to put him in a vise, and I'm going to use the Lishi tool. It is a six-pin lock, and so here's what we're looking at. Inside of here, you'll see me picking it. Um, the, obviously, the little handle here rotates the pick up on the front, which will be buried inside the keyway. So when I'm on chamber number six, we routinely call that pin six. Notice down here, best numbers things uh, in reverse order. But uh, until we start ordering a code cut key, we don't need to worry about that. So I'm on the last chamber. And if I get down, you know, I, I start pushing down, I get a click right there. All I'll do is on chamber six, I prepared a card here. So on chamber, actually in our world, chamber one, uh, shear line number one, I'll write down whatever the code is in that block. And then if I continue pushing down and I get a second click, say right there, I'll write him here. And if I get a third click from any master wafers or whatever, I can continue to populate this. I'm going to go from chamber to chamber until this entire card is populated, and then we'll know where all the shear lines are. So let me clamp it up and let's get started. All right, I think we got him lined up. What we're going to do is take the handle, push him all the way up, and that will retract the tip of our pick down inside of that lock or inside of that key body. Makes it much easier to insert. If you got it up like that, it makes it, it might cause some damage. So slide him all the way in there. Then you can let go, flip up the tensioning lever, and let me get this centered because this is where all the action happens. All right, I can use my thumb over here out of the picture to tension this entire tool. And in case you're wondering, that's how it sits. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to have to map and fill out this little card. So the first thing we want to do is get it lined up on the last chamber. Now, we have two numbering systems here. We have the best numbering system, and then we have everybody else in the world. Well, we've already numbered our card according to the best system. So just so I don't transpose and read from the wrong side, I'm going to take a black magic marker, and I'm just going to draw a line through these guys. Kind of do this to the camera. So we don't accidentally use them, and that'll force me... I went to a public school, guys. That'll force me to read these on the bottom. So we are on, actually, pin number one. Kind of counterintuitive. What I'm going to do is apply pretty good tension and then just try to find a binder. Just like picking the lock. Eh, it's a little bit different, but... Uh, put it, line up the needle with that chamber. Chamber three, it's still springy. Chamber four. Okay, now in chamber four, we got a binder. Now what I'm going to do, again, maintaining pretty good tension, I'm going to push down until I get a click. And we get a click, and that is about, that's about a two reading right there. Now, I have to, I'm going to guess here, I'm going to say there's not another one, because if there was another cut, they would only have to be one cut apart. I think that would be a bad practice, but I'm going to continue pushing just to double check and I get nothing. So there's a single cut on chamber four, and that is a cut of two. I'm going to populate our card, chamber four, so it's a two, and shear line two is also a cut of two. So it'll look, starting off, kind of look like that. All right, let's see what else we got here. I'm going to move to the next chamber, and that would be chamber five. Again, he's binding, so let's go ahead and push him down till we get a Find a shear line. And I got a click right there, and that is a cut of six. Now there's plenty more room there. There could be even as many as two cuts on this guy. So I'm going to continue pushing down, and he doesn't want to go. Now don't force it. If you get into this position, what that tells you is that the pin that I'm trying to pick now on the second shear line has a larger diameter than the pin I just picked. So the binding sequence is going to be different. All you need to do, release tension on the lock, just jiggle it real good, go back to chamber five, apply your tension, and then slide it down. You get the same click and then keep moving. And again, he's binding. So that pin is quite a bit larger than that first pin. So again, I'm going to release my tension. Just allow it to start through the shear line then reapply tension, and then keep sliding down. And I get a cut of, again, it looks like about a two. So we got a six and a two on chamber, 
chamber number five. So let's let's enter that in. So so far, there's where we are. So we're starting our map. I'm not finding any of the um, uh, master wafers yet. Okay, again, we're starting fresh. Nothing is picked. Uh, we got those guys already. Let's go to chamber one. See if he's binding, and he is. Actually, that's not chamber one. That's chamber six. Okay, got a nice click at, looks like a cut of three. Let's keep going. And I get nothing. So a cut of three for on chamber six. All right, let's keep going. We have four, five, um, yeah, we have four, five, and six. There is no seven. This is a six pin lock. Let's go back up here to chamber three. See if he's binding yet. And he's not. Chamber two. Okay, I got a minor click right there on, looks like about a seven cut. And let's just keep going. I got a click there on about a two. Let's keep going. Okay, that's it. So we got a two and a seven on pin number two. Let's check chamber number one. He's still not binding. Let's go back here. Chamber three. All right, he is not binding. Well, there's a lot of flex right here, but I don't think I'm going to have to apply more tension to force a binder. Okay, I'm getting nothing. Probably because he's he needs to be picked in sequence. So let's go ahead and pick, let's see, one and two. Let's just find any shear line on these guys. And maybe that will allow that one to bind. Now he's binding. Okay, now we're on chamber three. Okay, looks like a cut of four. There's plenty of room there. Maybe one or two more. And we got a cut of one, and there can't be anything past that. So we have a, a one and a four. And hopefully this last one is now binding. And he is not. So we basically have to pick some of these other guys to cause that one to bind. Let's see what we got here. Anything? Push him on. Oh, I got to turn. Um, <laughs> that was not expected. All right, we have uh, a core removal. I, I hit by accident. Uh, I hit the uh, the control shear line. That was not part of the plan. Let's put him back in there. So that was a shear line of. What we're going to do is decode this guy now, because I, I, I really lost track of which shear line is which. So what we're going to do on this one, on pin number one, and I'm going to write it down here on position number four. Position one is a cut of, looks like a five. Position two is a cut of two. Position three is a cut of one. Position four, oh, there's only one cut there, and they're both twos. It's got to be a two. Likewise, pin six, it's a cut three for both positions. So that's got to be a three. I really need to know position five. That would be here. And he's a cut of six. And that gives us our, our control shear. Now, that was not part of the plan. It certainly worked in our favor here. But here's what our populated chart looks like. So we have a, for our control shear, we have, this is the bidding. If I, if I wanted a key, that is the code that I would order. So we notice we have a two, we have a one, we have a two, we have a six, we have a three. So I actually hit that totally by luck. 
that should tell me that our control, our operating shear should be here. The only one I don't know is if there's another cut after cut five. I really don't know that. So let's go ahead and dial in these numbers. I'll go ahead and dial those and then get the, the lock ready. And then the last one, we just need to find that last number to get us the operating shear uh, code. Pretty easy stuff. Luckily, there were no master wafers in here. All right, guys, we pretty much mapped this guy out. We found all the shear lines except I, I got an open before we got that last one. So if I want to get the operating, what I believe is the operating, now it may be a mix and match, in which, in which case we'll have these extra slots to do that. But I didn't find any master wafers, and I have no reason to believe that there'd be any other different cuts in here. I'd be willing to bet if we figure this last one here out, we will have the operating shear line. So let me dial these guys in, and then we will find out. Be like Christmas. All right, it is completely locked. Let's go ahead. We know we have to pick chamber five first because we're trying to get that two cut. And when we found the shear lines, we found out that that pin was slightly oversized. So let's pick him first because that would be the proper binding order for the upper pins. So that would be a pin, a click, and I got a cut of two, which is what we want. Um, he's a little mushy. Okay, he's nice and solid. Let's get this guy. We want a cut of two on pin four. There we go. Now let's check this guy. He's nice and firm now. We want a cut of three on this one because that's the only cut on this chamber. And there it is, pin three. Okay, let's go to chamber number three. And we are looking for a cut of four here. Okay, we should get a click. Well, we won't reach one. So the first one we get is a cut four, hopefully. There it is. And there's also a cut of one further down. We're not going to worry about it. This one should be a cut of seven. Real stiff. There we go. I got it. And there's also a further cut of two, but we're not going down that far. And this last one, oh, I just heard something pop up. We don't know. Let's let's figure out what popped up first. Feel like they're all in place. And this last one. Cut of eight. So we can fill that blank in. We got a cut of eight. Uh, I don't think we're zoomed in. I think I let the camera do the work here. We are open, and we have more than a 10 degree turn. So we are open. Now all I got to do, well, I already know the code. I just need to fill in an eight right here. Okay, this guy, guys, this one was a little bit easier, and here's why. We had a couple of chambers that were the same. Chamber six only had a single cut, and was three. Chamber four also only had a single cut. The other piece was uh, luck. I don't know why, but uh, and I'm not going to complain. I actually hit the control shear first, then we had to figure out the last digit on the operating shear. Had there been uh, master wafers, we would have found a third shear line or even a fourth. We would have just filled these out. Once we found that control shear, it doesn't matter how many wafers were inside of there. They were all going to give us an open because you can mix and match master wafers. You just can't mix and match control shear with operating shear. Anyway, guys, I think you'll agree this is quite a unique tool. It gives us a lot more flexibility. I can now pop this out of here and replace it with my new core. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe, stay legal, and the giveaway. Guys, I hate to do it, but I'm going to give away not my new lock that I'm pinning up. Uh, these two guys, if you'd like to know how to win both the BE2 7-pinner and the 6-pinner, stick around, and I will tell you. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, Purple Band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you to let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click Submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.